Let's do this. What if we could use technology to take a new look at familiar subjects like the iconic statues of Easter Island? <clears throat> well, we can, and we are, and we always have. If you think about the telescope and the microscope and how they made the invisible visible. Well, for me, about 10 years ago, it started on Rapa Nui, where I took a team to do the first ever laser scan of seven of these moai on the island. The park service there was interested in erosion rates and should we cover them and so on. The data was great, as you can see here. Um, we were able to see chisel marks for how it was carved. We were able to see ancient graffiti. And oh, by the way, we did a 3D print of this moai. Pretty cool stuff. Well, then, on next to uh, the Arizona Memorial in Pearl Harbor, where another park service was curious to understand change detection, because you've got sacred ground here, right? This is a war grave. Steel battleship and salt water for over 70 years. Odds are it's not the same ship today that it was even a few years ago. So the last time the Park Service took a look at the ship, the comprehensive survey of the ship was 30 years ago in 1984, and you're looking at the results here. Beautiful hand-drawn rendering, but it's 2D, it's analog, and took three years to produce. Well, we set out to try to throw a whole bunch of technology for the first time ever and improve on those processes. We took LIDAR, which is laser-based, sonar, which is acoustic-based, a new technology called photogrammetry, which lets you create 3D models from photographs, and to really take another close look at the ship. This is a laser scanner that works underwater. One of the most amazing experiences I've ever had in the water, but you just have to stay in back of it because the laser will blind you. But this company said, yeah, we're supposed to work in deep water, but we're all over it. Shallow water will make it work, and holy cow, this data blew our minds. So you are looking at the bow of the Arizona. That's turret one with three remaining 14-inch guns up front, and then in the forward-most section, you can see the devastating damage of where the forward magazine exploded, um, killing 1,200 guys, sinking the ship in, 900, uh, in nine minutes. Another look here at turret one, the same guns, but this time uh, from a diver's perspective. And having been so fortunate to be in the water there and seen this, I immediately started thinking, how can we use technology to bring that sort of visceral reaction to this very sacred place to a broader audience? So we decided, let's use photogrammetry, which is easy because it's anybody with a camera, and pick an artifact which the deck of the ship is littered with and see what we can do. So we chose a cooking pot that you will see here in just a second on the deck of the ship. So first you see the video of the pot, swam around this thing, took a bunch of pictures of it, created a computer model, which you see here, and then holy cow, a color 3D print of this cooking pot that I had the honor of putting in the hands of a 92-year-old survivor of the ship. One of the members of the dives teams then said, wow, this photogrammetry stuff is amazing. I think it could really change existing coral reef monitoring processes, which are destructive. You've got to chop the coral off and bring it up to the boat to figure out 3D surface area and growth factors. It worked. Another dive team member said, well, what about historic preservation and great big targets? Because I know where this World War II F4U Corsair is in about 100 feet of water. Would it work? It did. And now we have this digital archive of this aircraft forever. Then we moved on. Then it's on, right? So then we went to the Pacific Aviation Museum there on Fort Island, scanned a B-17 that had recently been pulled out of the mud of New Guinea. Amazing find where the restoration people here were interested in, can we use this data to 3D print replacement parts that we can no longer get? Yes, you can. Wound up at the Pebble Beach Concours d'Elegance, car show of all car shows, 
and this $8 million 1954 Ferrari something, 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 they were interested, is it real? Or is this particular part genuine? Let's scan it, I can give you submillimeter results and tell you the answer. Then one of my favorites, the Smithsonian Institution, we worked with them to build a virtual museum. Where, but here, you can look at an artifact, change the lighting, change the color of the lighting, and people are actually making real discoveries here. Things that were invisible are now visible based on this technology. This is St. Philomena's Church, Molokai, and the old leper colony in uh, Kalapapa. Park Service here was interested in the historic preservation, of course, but now it was Father Damien, now St. Damien's Church, so now the Vatican is interested as well to do virtual pilgrimages, if you can get your head around that. This, scaling up further with a building, the Cadet Chapel at the Air Force Academy in Colorado Springs, where the Air Force was interested in, this place needs a lot of work. It leaks, it's cold in the winter, hot in the summer. How long is it gonna to take to fix how much will it cost? We can tell them that. And then finally, you probably know where you are. <laughs> this amazing building, right? It's the Ellen Theater, 100 years old. Well, we really hope that the state will help John and his amazing staff to make this great place just as great 100 years from now. So, <laughs> wow, right? I heard a few of you say, wow. Well. I believe that using technology to invoke a wow makes all things possible. Wow, I need to learn about this place. Or, wow, I need to save this place. Wow, we need to invest in this place. Or, wow, I never really saw this place before. Thank you. <laughs>